but it was not, of course, any conscious uh, thing. I mean, I think, you know, with inspiration for what makes you choose a film, I think it mm-hmm. seems to be largely, you could say, unconscious or intuitive yes. and, and very difficult to know. Until some years later, then you may get a perspective and all the emotion is drained away and, and you just see it intellectually. Mm-hmm. Well, why you? Oh, I suppose I was following this interest. But um, So it, this is not something that you were conscious of, you just kind of realized it looking back? Yes, I mean, otherwise I think you'd, lapse, you'd be in that category of filmmakers who... Um, Intellectualize. Uh, yes, are working consciously mm-hmm. or, um, you know, propagandizing what they're doing for maybe a good cause, but mm-hmm. you say, I will illustrate uh, the sermon um, uh, yeah. with the story, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the lesson. Yeah. And that would be the antithesis of my personality. I mean, I reacted against all kinds of... Uh, authority and school and university, I was completely uh, one of those type of uh, poor students who didn't respond to uh, the discipline. You seem to indicate that music was, a, was kind of the queen art. The queen oh, I think, art. yes, I do. Yeah, uh, yeah. I have no hesitation. My feeling yeah. is that music, in a way, has a kind of direct connection to the soul. It bypasses the intellect, mm-hmm, really. It's mm-hmm. very uh, difficult to talk about music. Yeah. And is that something that you feel the need to, is to work musically in the sense of bypassing the intellect as, as you could? I think I use music uh, you know, mm-hmm. as a tool to, uh, really, as I think of it, to jam the radar um, when necessary. I mean, obviously, filmmaking, you need you know, a lot of thinking time. It's, a, it's immensely practical. We all know that. And, um, and so that's, that's very important. But perhaps the most important is what the hell you're doing, you know, and why you're doing all that organizing, and that's therefore in the area of, uh, of those mysterious, um, you know, unconscious drives. And music will help uh, liberate it, I think, I find. But uh, I play it music while I'm working on the script shooting and, and in the editing. And uh, some tracks I'll drop as I move into another section of the process, and more will occur. and. Uh, and in the evening, for example, during a shoot, in the intense period of the shooting, in the evening, pretty much every evening, I have a ritual in which I will play that music for myself on headphones uh, after dinner for an hour or two in order to stop thinking. It's very hard to think while you're listening to music of great power, you know, or, or, or strength, you know, particularly the in, in speakers that are like uh, on your ears. And that, and that can be a temp music, or is it a music that, that kind of a token oh, music? Oh, totally, the uh, totally eclectic. It could be, it could, could be anything. But the but the music tends to gather around the film, uh, but it can. It's generally not um, n- not vocal, and if it is vocal, it's not in English or not in a language. Of that not comprehensible. Yeah. No, no. Yes. Uh, and so it's uh, it's therefore that would wouldn't work at all mm-hmm. for me. And, and some of that music is, um, you might say, en- energetic, others contemplative, others quite mysterious. The notion of like taking away the words mm. uh, to get at what it, whatever it is that you're yes. really after. I, I mean, I, I think in this very brief period of, this, um, of, the, uh, of the art of film, I, I would certainly, if I had a choice, be of worked in the silent era, I think, without question. Uh, yes, if I had a choice, yeah. mm-hmm. and how exciting! This was all new; there were no rules. <laughs> you were you were part of making the rules if yeah. you were there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, nonetheless, you know, it's uh, it, it has um, in my own way. I have found a way that the dialogue, which is who 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 would complain about beautiful words? You know, because you, it's just often they're not not beautiful words, or you don't have. Uh, um, but there's other ways to better to say what you uh, want to say without uh, dialogue. Yes. And it's true, when I think of your films and why, why they move me and so on, it's often because m- the, the important stuff is unspoken. This uh, interests me tremendously for a period mm-hmm. of uh, intense uh, interest mm. in uh, painters doing uh, still lives, mm. uh, great painters, painters whom I admired. Yes. Um, you know, I mean, of course, immediately you say uh, Cezanne, for example, mm-hmm. um, but there are, there are others, um, Van Gogh when, with his sunflowers, but... Um, and his shoes, I love his and shoes. shoes. <laughs> yeah. And so, why? What is it that makes you weak at the knees when you see a work uh, from this kind of um, um, genius? When there is, in fact, no uh, plot, mm-hmm. there is no context, uh, there is no no um, overt message. Mm-hmm. And then, the, in, 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 I would say necessarily in the pre-symbolist period, 
Yes. Uh, where again you don't have to decode it. Yes. It's simply a bunch of flowers. Yes. Uh, or some fruit. Uh, yet, yet you can be overwhelmed by it. So that interested me very much as to whether that was relevant in filmmaking. That when you reach a point where you're ready to make a film, could you make a film about anything? I think yeah. Bergman put it best. He mm-hmm. said, "You've." You know, you fire an arrow off in a forest, you know, and, and then some time afterward you go to see where mm-hmm. it fell, where, where, whether it hit the mark you kind of sensed. Um, and I think he was talking about this, that you really, yes, you're driven by something, yes, you have a st- sort of structure, um, but nevertheless the actual reason you made it is, is very mysterious and, and therefore the primal drive behind that.